G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been to this channel before, it's all about my 1966 Hillman Supermix. And normally the videos are, are, are on that vehicle. But today we've got something different. So today we've got another Hillman Supermix. So this vehicle I've known about for the last few years. And it's actually what inspired me to buy my, my Hillman. Um, we're in the South Island of New Zealand. We're going to talk to the owner, Andy about about this car and sort of a little bit of history on it what's being done to the car and sort of what the plans are going forward so uh andy you're the current owner of the of this hillman supermix i am yes what's the um what's the history on it um i believe i'm the third owner um i bought it from a family that's had it since 1980 so she the mother had it for 39 years um she was in her early 20s when she bought the car or when the husband bought it for her yeah and um obviously Drove it, loved it uh, for a long time. Um, but as the years went on, she um, was more sort of looking at some of the power, power steering and that. So it ended up getting parked up for quite a while, but the kids were using it. Yeah. Um, and I just so happened to stumble across it on Trade Me with the third owner. So that's that, yeah. Yeah. And the thing, what I like about this vehicle, and it's and it's sort of what inspired me to buy mine, is is one thing that stands out is the colour. Yeah, it's, an, it's, a, it's a bit of a unique colour, and I haven't seen too many around with a similar paint scheme. No, um, look, it, 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 there's quite a few colours that they came out in, but the, the, the mint green, that's what appealed to us. Um, it was my wife, she saw it on Trade Me and, and called it cute. Um, I'm not someone that really calls cars cute, but uh, uh, because I knew she liked it, uh, I went and bought dinner that night, and on the way... To buying dinner, I had pulled over on the side of the road and I rang the the owner at the time, uh, or the son who was selling it for his mum, and I said to him, um, "Look, uh, is it as good as it looks?" And yeah, and he told me that there's a few quirks, obviously, as a car would yeah. at this age. And when I got back with dinner, uh, we were the proud owners of a new 1966 Hillman Supermax. Now I know that you've got a quite a long history of owning different vehicles mm. from. You know, four cylinder engine vehicles up to V8s. What are your thoughts on the on the on the Hillman Supermax? You know, produced by Roots Group. Well, I am a bit of a closet British car man. Um, some mates will laugh at that because uh, I drive a Mustang and um, you know ride a Harley Davidson, so it's a wee bit different, I guess. But these cars are really are a fantastic vehicle, um, regardless of what some people might think. But it's not everyone's taste, but. My uncle had one. Uh, we were fortunate enough uh, to live quite close as a family. We lived next door to my yeah. uncle and auntie, and uh, they had quite a big family. And um, he had two vehicles at the time, and I remember I was only a kid, but um, he had a Series 3 Hillman Supermix yeah. um, and a Ford Capri, which was his, like a new car back in those days. And uh, I don't know, it was just the wee red mix that used to sit out the front. Yeah. That appealed to me. And, yeah. of course, once I saw it, I thought, well, um, you know, one day I'm going to own me one of them. We're just going to have a quick look around the car. There's obviously a bit of work going on with it at the moment, but we we'll, might check out the engine bay here. It's um, looking a little bit different to mine. When I got the vehicle, it came with a, uh, the 2836 Weber. It had a standard um, distributor in it at the time. Uh, like anything, I wanted it to be as reliable as possible, so I sent the Weber up to Weber Specs in Auckland and got that rebuilt. They did an amazing mm. job and, and jetted it based on um, the details that I gave them. There's no work done internally to the engine, but um, they just... They basically in their database they knew what they had to do as mm. far as the um, ignition goes i replaced the whole distributor with a full electronic ignition distributor uh, the one we had mm. in there originally the, the original lucas 25d4 the weights they, they had worn and uh, it just wasn't running right along with that and the sports coil put on it certainly runs and drives a lot better it's, it's just reliable you know you're going to get spark every time yeah you're going to get spark every time so um yeah look i'm, I'm being happy with that and, and otherwise all i've really done is i've pulled the front end down and um uh, Give everything a good clean up and uh, given the cooling system a full flush and uh, run obviously new antifreeze through it. Other than that, uh, it's a pretty bog standard engine. And you've got some extractors on there as well. Yeah, it's got flows. It came, again, it came with those as well. Yeah. Um, the, the chrome rocket cover that came with that. Um, and I think I think that that's a real a real point that the chrome rocket cover. To be honest, uh, I wouldn't have cared if it wasn't chrome. It's just it does finish it a little bit because obviously you've got the chrome air cleaner on it too, the k Um uh, I've got a RAM flow filter too, but yeah. the k is a lot better filter as far as um, the setup goes, and that's something which um, Weber specs specified as well. So you certainly, um, if you're running a Weber on one of these and you need to get it rebuilt, they're the guys to go to. 
And I see you've also um, – the generator's been replaced with an alternator. Yeah, yeah, I don't know much the, about that. Oh, I haven't done any history on the replacement, but uh, I believe uh, once the generators do go, it is probably easier and better to replace with an alternator. I know it doesn't yeah. keep it standard, but yeah. um, the alternator is um, obviously a better charging option. Um, yeah. And I run a 15-plate um, NS70 battery, so it's around 750-odd cranking amps. Yeah. So I don't have any issues with it. So. And you're missing a choke on this at the moment. Yeah, a bit of a do-or-die one with the choke. But I'll, um, I, I will eventually probably connect the choke back up. It is probably common sense to do that. But it starts okay. Weber Specs, who did the car, we even said, look, it's jetted to the point where it'll it'll start fine and whatever. Yeah, it runs a bit rough, but once you're going, you, you wouldn't know. And you got some driving lights on the front there. Yeah, they come with it as well, but um, just sort of set it off a little bit. Uh, there's not much I've done as far as, like, replace anything on the outside of the part from the wheels. Yeah. Um, which uh, I wanted to go to some old school um, turbos, and uh, that's what we've got. So I'm getting some wide rims sorted for it at the moment. Perfect. So go back to the wide rims and hard caps lot. What's going on with the suspension here at the moment? Well, since 1966, <laughs> you're just a bit flogged. Because um, uh, mine are the same, Andy. Mine are um, uh, shot, <laughs> and um, it's quite rolly. Well, you can see that these ones have had some modifications over the years, including <laughs> spaces and, um, yeah. and, and you know, it's supposed to be a, a three-quarter inch um, sway bar, which it is, but... That's probably more like seven, eight now as far as that gap goes. So yeah. you imagine it was quite wobbly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've, I've removed the sway bar um, and given everything a wee bit of a clean up. Uh, it's going to get uh, de properly degreased and steam clean next. And uh, uh, I've ordered new shockies. And for those who um, know these humans well, probably know that these shockies aren't really available off the shelf. Um, like the rear ones, you, there is a listing through Monroe Gas. But front ones, I've had to go for... Um, through the recommendations of a fellow over in Australia who's got a 66 Singer Vogue, so it's the same setup in the front. And uh, uh, funny enough, their uh, Nissan D21 two-wheel drive um, shock absorbers, uh, front shocks, are readily, still readily available. Um, the only thing we have to do is modify the bracket that holds them in. Um, okay. As far as length um, extraction, um, you know, the out length and the in length on the mm. shockies itself, um, very similar, and just modify this from 3.8 to um, 12 mil. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, so I've got all the new bolts and uh, everything to put everything back together again. So that Nissan, is a is it a Ute or is yeah, it Yeah, Nissan Navara or no. Toronto D21. Okay. Um, there's two different setups in the front, front end, but you'll know the ones when you see them because they look exactly the same as the shockies that have come out. The other ones are a fairly normal-looking shock. Yeah. Yep. Um, but the, the, it's a shame because, obviously, the Hillman Minx the, itself, uh, the shocks are really available, but... They're um, needle, needle, not needle eye as far as the fitting goes. Yeah. And um, what's happening with the rear? You're going to um, replace the shock absorbers? Going to next. Yeah. 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 And so after I've done the front here, give it a bit of clean up, paint it um, up underneath, I'll uh, turn it around and yeah. remove the rear wheels and do the same thing, clean everything up, take the brake, uh, take the hubs off and check everything and replace the rear shockies and that, which are look more readily available, which is good. You know, it's in pretty original condition. Yeah. I understand it had a paint. New paint job back in the 80s. Uh, 1980, uh, when they first got it, it had a wee bit of sun fade. The whole car wasn't painted, but the top, um, the bonnet, the roof, and the boot were. Yeah. So um, everything else is pretty much original. Um, there's still some sun fading now coming through in the areas that weren't touched at the time. Mm. Um, and it's had an unfortunate little whack in the back. You can't see it because where it's parked at the moment. It's not a major, but uh, that is something that we'll look at getting done once we um, get it rolling and running right yeah we'll, we'll, we'll start investing money on the body itself yeah and it's it looks as though it's had the same issues mine have had these rear quarter light seals yep. are, are sort of dry rotted but that you know you can you can get these through rear spares in australia they yep. still have the molds they still make them yeah and there's and there's there's no rust no very little rust um that's one thing that is uh but then again what's under the paint you never know but uh look i've had a guy look at it and he said it's pretty sound um if there is rust, it's in all the right areas. There's no structural rust? No, nothing structural. Um, underneath is uh, clean, uh, obviously oily, which probably stops it from rusting. They have like a yeah. – British cars have a natural yeah. um, uh, desire to just leak oil and, and keep themselves rust-proofed, I guess. So, yeah, as, yeah. The, as the mechanic told me when I got my last one of fitness, it has uh, factory oil leaks. It has factory oil leaks. And yeah, what's if it's not leaking oil, it doesn't have oil. And what's going on with this um, this visor? Is yeah, that... again, it came with it's not you don't see many. I get a lot of comments about it from guys on uh, the international pages um, mm. when I post the pictures. Uh, there's a few of them I do see out there, but 
Um, mm-hmm. I'm on most of the Hillman sites, uh, Supermink sites, uh, Roots Group, that sort of thing. And you don't see too many. It, so um, it's, again, uh, I believe it came with the car when they bought it too. It was a company called Todd Motors down in Petonia. These were imported as breakdown crate yep. units and, yep. they were, and they were put together. Is that, is that true for this car? Yep, it's Petonia yeah. built, yep, um, or Petonia assembled. Um, yeah. And uh, I believe 99.9% of the, the Roach Group cars of that era were coming out of the Petonia plant. Yeah. Uh, you don't see too many that were full um, assembled imports. Uh, you might get the old one where it's possibly been owned by somebody over in the UK or, or, or somewhere similar. Yeah. And they've bought it back as a sentimental value. They've brought it to New Zealand with them. Yeah. Uh, I'd say the majority of these things on the road over here were built out of the, or assembled out of that plant for Tony. Yeah. And the interior is looking all pretty original as well. I mean, yeah. obviously, there's some, there's a few little modifications here. You've got a stereo, an oil pressure gauge, uh, aftermarket oil pressure gauge. Yes. Yeah. Uh, look, to be honest, the gauge actually serves probably a better um, option than what the light does, to be honest, because yeah. you know what's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, the stereo, uh, it's pretty pretty hard out stereo <laughs> system, and that, that came with the car. Yeah. That shows the, the youthful side of who was driving it prior to my ownership. And it's got the original carpets by the looks of it. It has. They're worn. They're done. Uh, again, get it looking and rolling good and then I'll start um, uh, working on those little things like the interior at the moment it's just yeah. uh, putting money into the things that need to be done to keep it keep it on the road eventually I'll get that sorted out and uh, do the hood lining and new rev um, the, the old sun visors as well they're getting a bit worn yeah uh, the, and uh, and do you know if they can be just um, reupholstered those sun visors yeah I did go to an upholstery guy and he just said it just bring it in the way it is and they'll just rebuild it it's just that material to be honest um, well, there we go. It's like a vinyl material. Yeah, there you go. Top. That's that's what's in there. Oh, it's like a fo- like a foam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. and they're in a pretty bad way. Um, but I think what they'll do is they'll put like a um, uh, like a something just to support it, give it a bit more support. Yeah. And um, they'll just reuse the hardware as far as the hinge system yeah. that goes on it. Another modification here. We've got rear seat belts installed. Yep. Yeah, that was um, something that uh, didn't need to be done because of the era of the car. Unfortunately, these things are a lot less forgiving in the modern car. Um, so yeah, it's yeah, it's good to have some uh, seatbelts in the rear as well. All right, guys. Well, there we have it. Another 1966 Hillman Supermix. Big thanks to Andy for sharing his car with us and uh, just talking about the history. This was the car that inspired me to get my Hillman. Always really good to meet with another owner of a, of a, a vehicle like this that it's being um, maintained and on the road, which is what it's all about. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.